has been called by many names. Koroito in Bomet and Ukimuya Mahindi in Naivasha and Limuru areas. Farmers call it different things, but one thing that they all agree on is that the maize lethal necrosis disease is the worst thing to ever happen to maize. <laughs> What you can actually see here is uh, as a typical symptom of the MNLD disease where you have premature drying of the cob. And actually you can actually see, for example, this cob here has almost no grain at all. And this is because the disease actually affects the whole physiology of the plant. You don't get any pollen uh, forming from the stamens and so you don't get any fertilization. And once you don't get any fertilization, that what means is that you, no grain develops. And this is actually what you see. And this is what most farmers will see after the disease. This is exactly what they're going to be harvesting. Now behind me here, this is the first stage of the disease whereby you can see the crop is still green, but then the leaves are starting to show signs of yellowing. And then from there you go to the next stage where the leaves are starting to dry. And actually that is the stage where many farmers realize that the disease in their crop is maize lethal necrosis disease. Until finally over here, just across this way, this is the final stage of the maize lethal necrosis disease, whereby if you look at the crop, there's barely anything. The crop literally it dries completely until eventually it dies. It took a while from the time the disease was first observed before scientists figured out what it was. A combination of two viruses, the maize chlorotic mortal virus and the sugarcane mosaic virus. There was a study to compare where, how does this strain, MCMV especially one of the pathogens, how does it compare to the strain in USA and in Africa and in Thailand and in China? And then when you actually evaluate materials, MCMV resistant materials, bring them to Naivasha and see them, that is the final proof that all those materials which are otherwise very resistant in US, you bring them here, subject them to artificial inoculation, they completely die like this. We are always afraid, not just only of climate change, but also of new diseases coming in, and especially viruses. Because viruses cannot be controlled in a chemical way. So you have no chemicals that you can uh, use in the field. So you have to do it through resistance breeding and tolerance breeding, what we are doing now here. Although Bomet County in Kenya is ground zero for the maize lethal necrosis disease, it has spread to eight other African countries, including Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda and the DRC. The amount of uh, the percentage yield loss on a national scale after survey of 15 counties in Kenya is 23% uh, average yield loss across Kenya. And that translates to almost uh, 110 million dollars. Since the maize lethal necrosis disease was first reported in Kenya in 2011, at least 28,000 varieties of maize have been brought from around the world to be tested with the aim of finding a variety that is either tolerant or resistant to this disease. Now this is the MLN research facility in Naivasha and all the maize you see here has been infected with the MLN. But when you look in front of me here, this maize is already turning yellow, showing signs of the disease, while this one next to it is still green. Now this here is the tolerant variety compared to this one. It has been nearly four years now since research into the maize lethal necrosis disease started and scientists say they finally have four varieties that are tolerant to MLND, two of which are ready for release here in Kenya and two in Uganda. Compared to the commercial checks where you have 80 to 100 percent yield loss, in a tolerant hybrid you have at least where there is zero to one ton per hectare, you get at least three to four tons per hectare or five tons per hectare. The Kenyan tolerant varieties have been named H12ML and H13ML, but they are only suitable for mid-altitude areas such as Naivasha, Nakuru, the Eastern Rift Valley and all other areas that are between 16 and 1700 meters above sea level. At the moment, there's no variety that shows 100% resistance to MLN yet, but the researchers are hopeful that by the end of this year, at least five tolerant varieties will have been released to farmers across the region and a total of 20 by the end of next year. Zainab Wandati NTV.